In this section, we will cover various setups for different diameters and lengths. The first step is to select the proper blade thickness for the workpiece you are going to grind. Use a 1 16th inch thick blade for workpieces between 70 thousandths of an inch and 1 8th of an inch in diameter. Use a 1 8th inch thick blade for workpieces between 1 8th of an inch and 3 8 of an inch in diameter. Use a quarter inch thick blade for workpieces between 3 8 of an inch and 2 inches in diameter. Once you have selected and installed the proper blade, you need to adjust its height. Do this by unlocking the blade holder with a 3 16 inch hex wrench and pivot it down to the height you need. You can use the blade holder's fine adjustment to get the blade tuned to the final height. Once the blade holder has the proper blade thickness and is adjusted to the proper height, lock down the holder with a 3 16 inch hex wrench. Now you need to set the pressure roller assembly in the proper position on the workpiece. Slide the pressure roller assembly onto the pressure roller arm. You want the bearing to be about three quarters of the way back on your workpiece. This allows you to grind out at the end of your part while giving the tension roller assembly enough leverage to keep the part in its proper position. You also want to set the roller contact point at about a 45 degree angle above the part. This allows the bearing to hold the part down on the roller while at the same time keeping it firmly against the guide blade edge. Once you get the pressure roller assembly in the proper place, you can lock it down in the back of the assembly by using the 3 16 inch hex wrench. You'll want to do this with no part in the unit. Now it's time to adjust the tension of the pressure roller. To do this, insert a 3 16 inch hex wrench in the top of the unit. Turning the screw clockwise will increase the tension, while turning counterclockwise will lighten the tension. For larger diameter parts that require a lot of material removal, set the tension heavy. For smaller diameter parts, less tension is required. Next, put the stop in place. The stop will allow each workpiece to be positioned in the same place every time you load the part. You can secure the stop block in place by using the same 3 16 inch hex wrench. There are four holes to choose from depending on how long your workpiece is. Once the block is positioned, attach the stop arm to the block with your hex wrench. To accommodate a larger selection of lengths, the stop arm can be mounted on the front of the unit by using the designed round stop block. Simply slip the round stop block in and use a 3 16 inch hex wrench to secure the screw in place on top of the unit. Now that you have your stop in position, it is important to make sure that your part moves naturally back toward the stop when the regulating roller is turning in the clockwise direction. To ensure this, adjust the pressure roller cam screw by using an 8th inch hex wrench. Slightly turning the roller screw will skew the roller, causing the part to move either forward, away from the stop, or backwards into the stop. Adjusting the roller to move the part into the stop is critical in setting up the unit. It will ensure that each part that you load will be located and held at precisely the same position relative to the grinding wheel. If adjusting this roller does not move the part in the proper direction, you may need to adjust the angle of the blade holder. To do this, unlock the blade angle lockdown screw using a 3 16 inch hex wrench and turn the blade angle adjustment knob either forward to make the part roll to a front stop or turn the knob backwards to make it roll backwards into a rear stop. It is important to remember that by doing this you may cause the part to be turned unsquare to the grinding wheel resulting in a possible taper on any step you grind. Therefore only move this blade angle a slight amount to compensate for any taper that may have been caused, you will need to shim the unit up slightly on its rear sign bar on the back of the unit. This should give you a straight step when you grind. The TrueTech Systems unit also has the capability to grind angles by tilting the unit up on sign, 
To do this, unlock the clamp assembly in the back of the unit and add the correct amount of gauge blocks or Joe blocks. When you have the unit at the proper angle, you can lock the clamp assembly back in place. Before grinding straight or angled steps, check the relationship between the wheel center line and the part center line. The center line of the workpiece should be slightly to the left of the center line of the grinding wheel when grinding steps. An eighth inch minimum and a quarter inch maximum. Another very useful setup feature of the TrueTech Systems unit is the 360 degree pivoting action. This feature allows a couple of different setups. One is to mount a chuck on the front of the unit, then pivot the entire unit around to grind out of the chuck. This is used when there is not enough material to roll off the regulating roller and still give good concentricity. Another setup allows you to do production chamfering. To do this setup, simply unlock the pivoting lockdown screw with a quarter inch hex wrench. Then pivot the unit to approximately 45 degrees and lock down the screw. It is important to gently tighten this screw. Over tightening can break the screw head. Next, position the unit to the grinding wheel. Move the unit off to the left of the center of the grinding wheel. You want to find the section of the wheel that will put a chamfer on your workpiece. For instance, if you want a 45 degree chamfer, move the unit off center about 2 inches on a 7 inch diameter wheel. If the angle doesn't come out correct, then you may need to move the unit more off center if you want a steeper angle or less if you want a shallower angle. This is a great way to do high production chamfers and help to reduce wheel wear. In this section, we will cover some of the recommended speed and feed rates when using the unit. In some cases, it may be ideal to rough and then finish your workpiece. When roughing material off a part, run the TrueTech system's power supply between 4 and 6 volts. If the diameter is smaller than 250 thousandths, the speed of the power supply may be run slower. The slower the roller speed, the more aggressive you can be when plunging. When roughing, a soft resin bonded wheel may be used. These wheels will break down more quickly, but will make plunging the material much faster. Be sure to plunge and sweep off material at an even rate of speed to avoid chatter or vibration in your wheel. Failure to do this will result in less aggressive plunge rates and unsatisfactory finishes. If chatter or vibration does occur, simply dress the wheel with the wheel dressing attachment on the back of the unit. Next, if you are finishing material, run your voltage faster usually between 6 and 8 volts. This will allow better finishes on the workpiece. Also, when finishing material, it is ideal to use a harder metal, vitrified, or poly-bonded grinding wheel. These wheels will hold a sharp corner longer and leave better surface finishes. When finishing, plunge at a slower rate of speed and also sweep across material at a slow and steady rate of speed. This will help achieve the best finishes possible.